As a GM, have you ever had the players go completely off course within a session? Have they ignored all the pointers and decided to do something completely different to what you had expected them to do and planned for? Well, in this video, I am going to share with you my top five tips to ensure that the session goes, continues to go well, and will actually make it look like this is what you had planned for all along. My name's Ian Wills, and welcome to the In Crowd. Hello everyone and welcome to this video and my channel. So my videos here focus on one of two things, either being a small but proud content creator or being an active, active game master. And this video is one of the latter ones in a series I call the Gibbering GM, where I share with you tips about being an effective game master. So please, if you find this or any of my videos helpful, then please consider liking, commenting and subscribing and pressing that bell button so you get a notification when my next video goes live. With that all over and done with, let's get on with the content of the video. Oh, and if you stick around right to the end, I'm going to let you know about some of the other content that is coming up on this channel. So I actually started to Dungeon Master or Games Master when I first was introduced to the basic Dungeons and Dragons rule set when I was 14 years old. And since then, I have DM'd or GM'd a number of campaigns in a range of rule sets. And I am currently still a very active GM playing a number of games and running several campaigns pains and through all this GM experience there has been numerous times that I have planned meticulously an, an adventure with hooks etc and I thought yes this is where the players will go and I found out that they've ignored a lot of this and just gone in a totally di different direction and since I've dealt with that quite well, I think quite successfully on a number of occasions, I wanted to share with you my top five tips to ensure that the players do not catch you as the GM out. So top tip number one, don't panic. Now this is actually has been my first reaction on a number of cages, occasions, especially if I've planned several encounters, um, had a whole load of tokens already and maps drawn out. It can be quite difficult not to panic especially if this happens right at the beginning of the gaming session. And the reason I'm sort of like suggesting do not panic is not because um, we are as GM GMs worried or concerned that the players are going off in a different direction. It's probably more that we're thinking it's just started. I don't know what they're going to do what happens to all that content I've created and that, that turmoil that our mind goes into. Now, just to give you an example of this, I was DM a, a Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition game when the party were at the right at the beginning of the session, the party went um, out to a small village and they were meant to accept um, a plea from the villagers to save them from some haunting spirits and I kid you not right at the beginning of the adventure right at the beginning of the gaming session they literally turned around to them and said no thanks and continued on their way now 
I actually have some comments and some ideas that I sort of like put into play at this point um, so to hopefully hide the panic or subdue that panicking feeling in, inside. For example, I might have said something like, yes, that didn't sound a very good um, enough deal or yeah it should have been a lot higher to attract adventurers like you and or things like that are quite descriptive and add to the narrative like you walk away very proud of yourself as you leave the villagers to their fate or even to almost like let them be aware that I'm quite happy for them not to um, take that job even though I'm panicking a lot inside. I might say something like, you did the right thing, good decision. And even though, <laughs> uh, seriously, I will be thinking, good grief, what is going to happen next? And this brings me nicely on to tip two, make them do the work. Okay, so I've heard a lot of Twitch streamers who stream role-playing games mention a publication called The Lazy GM. Now, when at the moment I'm trying to finance all my role-playing games and all my content um, via, you know, new books, etc., new rule set via videos and content creation. So I haven't actually managed to and put together the money to buy this publication yet but I'm just going to um, comment on it from what I've heard other streamers saying. So one of the the lazy GM actually um, recommends this strategy as well and rather than the onus coming on you as a GM about what's going to happen once they leave that crossroads of choice you actually hand it over to the players and let them detail the next step. And I think it's quite natural for the players to sort of like turn to the GM and say, so, okay, then we're not taking that job. Where do we go next? And I think it's important that we sort of like say, okay, no, you decide because I don't want to give another scenario and they just say, no, we don't want to do that either. And this might be a complete adventure or just part of an encounter. So let me give you an example. In a recent Mithras game, I would planned for the party to go down into the sewers in hot pursuit of some fleeing antagonists. However, they did not take the bait. Uh, you know, they said, no, we're not going down there. It sounds a bit dangerous. And so I kept calm and basically said, OK, that's brilliant. What what would you like to do next? Where do you think you go? And I think this also allows the GM time to think and sort of like think, OK, then what can I use that they're not going to, for example, if they're going not going down the sewers, can I use some of that encounter somewhere else? Um, yeah, but let them lead for a while and you just relax and allow your imagination to kick in and tip top tip top top tip number three <laughs> okay now this is not actually anything to do with creating a new adventure or anything like that but it is a top tip got it right that time that i found really useful and that is to make notes okay now what I, I really can't recommend this enough from all the experience that I've had. You know, sometimes the players will go off and start to explore different parts of the town or go in a different direction or meet new um, NPCs or anything like that. And I think it's all that can be really valuable information for the campaign. Now, I don't know how you record or the, either your adventures or the narratives or anything like that, but I actually use World Anvil. And if you are interested in knowing why or how I use it, then I'll post the connection, the links to the previous videos up here and down there. Now, one of the 
it, wonderful things about World Anvil is that it gives me a notepad that's online and I can quickly start to type and record what's going on. And a lot of the time the players will give me um, NPCs that they're going to go back to and actually interact with and I can use that data and um, that information that they're creating themselves and I'm just quickly recording in note form for future activities and yes so I have to say that quite frequently um, the party have gone off piste uh, so to speak, and they have met a new NPC and I've not made a note of it. And then suddenly they keep wanting to go back to this PC. And I'm sort of like thinking, what, what on earth was their name? So really, you know, as they're um, creating new PCs or new areas or new situations or you were co-creating it together with GM and players, then yeah, make sure everything gets recorded in some way and continuing the vein in or in the vein of being prepared um top tip number four is have options ready now this might sound uh, a little bit strange that we're talking about um, not being prepared for what the players uh, decide to do, but actually being prepared and or having options ready. And what I class this at is being semi-prepared. Let me give you some ideas and some thoughts about it. So on World Anvil that I used to keep my campaign notes in, I have two articles or two documents if you like that I'm adding to on a regular basis. Um, the first one is any ideas that I have at any point um, about small or insignificant or um, encounters or interactions. So it might be that I suddenly think oh it'd be really funny if and sort of like quickly make a note of that or I might be um, watching a film and think oh that's a really good um, um, interaction with an NPC or reading a book and I've, I think I've actually done this ever since playing first edition advanced Dungeons and Dragons and we used to have wandering monster tables um, in when the party went on their dungeon crawl yeah and if you remember wandering monster tables from first edition ad and d then do let me know in the comments below so whenever i get uh, an idea about an npc or an encounter i pop it into this um, document and this has been really helpful in at moments when parties have gone off in different directions and I, or I haven't done enough planning for the session and I, I actually go to this article, this document and start to use it. Now I have to say that the only thing that I actually record is just like bullet points and what the common mob or antagonists are going to be, nothing more. So it might be an idea of some ruffians chasing after a merchant down the um, street or a damsel in distress or you know a fleeing um, herd of pigs going down the main street on a very slippery wet evening and what could actually go um, what could actually happen in this um, in these situations and it, it's interesting that I actually have down in the article that I, I don't know which horror film it is, but there was uh, a clown down a drain and I watched this, how he grabbed somebody and pulled them down. And I've actually got that on my article sheet thinking I'm going to use it somewhere, you know, so players be warned. The second thing I do um, to have options ready, and this is because my mind um, can't operate quick enough, is that I have a, a list of names that I think would be suitable for the campaign. And you can use 
um, random fantasy generators for names um, that are freely available on the internet. But I always find that when I use those, I sort of press it and think, no, I don't like one press it again don't like as it keeps refreshing or how on earth do you pronounce that one so i actually keep a list of possible npc names ready and then all i do is that as i use them i make a note next to their name in the article who they are and then add it to my to-do list to actually um, make a proper document out of it Okay then, so we've had four already and next up my final top tip for when players decide to go their own way uh, rather than what we have planned. So top tip number five, the final one. Um, sometimes, and I've been guilty of this in the past, um, we often can see as um, game masters, the players going um, off in a different direction as quite negative. But for quite a few years now, what I've done is actually seen this as a, a positive. And I've actually rewarded the players for their um, imagination and how what they've created of what we have co-created ourselves so let me give you an example of that um, in the recent m space game completely out the blue hammond the sort of like the jury rigger electronic expert declared that he wanted to rig one of the jeeps um, into a remote control bomb to attract local sandworms and hopefully blow one up. Now, this was completely out the blue. I had planned for something completely to hap different to happen. But since it had come from the players, it was, I feel it was my job as the GM to make it happen and then to reward the players for their creativity. Of course, the rules had to be followed. It wasn't just, a, no, you can do it, no worries at all. And But I didn't make the roles impossible or I didn't say, well, this is this, you don't have that, you don't have that, you don't have that. So you can't do any of this, but this would be a better thing, which was what I planned. And I think it's really important that we don't try to dissuade them from going off in a particular direction if they want to go in that direction and at the same time um, I think it's also important that we don't punish them for that or we don't make it um, ridiculously hard for them to, to do it because remember your idea or our idea as a game master was just our thoughts and of course there are a lot of different ways to uh, achieve the same aim so yeah just because they've decided to go off in a different direction let's reward their actions and work with them you know to to make it happen and i think if we do that sometimes or often it makes that those actions a lot more memorable um, in the session yeah, so those are my top five tips and let me know what your tips are down in the comments below. Now, before you all dash off um, to create your next session, I just wanted to clarify a couple of points. Um, firstly, I totally accept that some players might be out to cause issues in the game or being very negative or they're constantly trying to justify their, their approach and to go off in different directions or to kill other player characters and things like that. Now, people like this are just sort of like, it's too much hassle, you know, and I understand that, you know, we're not all perfect, but people who are purposefully going out to ruin a session, whether or not it be with rule mongering or um, interacting negative with people, um, I would say as a GM, if it's causing you a whole load of stress and you've had a chat with them, then, you know, there's the door or there's a the log out button. Um, secondly, I just wanted to give you a quick um, uh, review of what will be coming up in the future in these videos. So 
first things first of course our actual play videos are always here and thank you to everybody who watches those i hope you enjoyed them and secondly i want this to be a channel or part of a channel that really supports role playing and games mastering etc and i really want to become part of that community so as well as top tips like this one and my previous one that i did about journeys i'm going to talk about um, creating npcs and also give you adventure ideas and give you some idea of how i approach things to hopefully contribute to that huge wealth of knowledge that is already out there i also would like it a place for people for us to check share ideas you know whether or not these be top tips or from um experience whether or not you're an experienced gm or a novice gm i want it a place that you know we can help each other and um, one of my favorite ideas that i've got coming up soon are adventure ideas on a single piece of pdf or one side of a4 paper and these would be for you to use so rather than creating a huge module there might be individual encounters or in more detail or an overview for a series of adventures in less detail so you can adapt them and one thing that i'm really um, passionate about is to make those encounters or those ideas not rule specific so no matter what it is you can use it so yeah so if you think any of these ideas would be useful or you have some ideas of your own of how i can con contribute to the immense pool of experience out there then yeah let me know drop me an email or put it in the comments below and that's it that's the end of this video but before you get back to your campaign writing i think i've said that a few times i'll work on my scripts don't worry if you have any suggestions or strategies that you use when the party or players go astray from the prepared storyline then please do let me know in the comments below and if there are any books that you would recommend uh, as apart from well including the lazy gm one then do let me know i always enjoy talking and learning from everyone in the community so thank you for including me there okay until next time this is the gibbering gm signing out and returning to his campaign have fun everyone and happy role playing see ya bye